welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. Grab your coffees, ladies and gentlemen. Grab your tea, your water, your Bibles, your journal, and get on your tippy toes and lean in because today we have a precious, precious woman of God. She's an apostle. She's a prophetess. She's an author. She is a shepherd. God uses her in a beautiful way, signs, miracles, and wonders, gives her open visions. And she has just been walking in the things of the Spirit uh, since 1992. She has a book that unpacks some beautiful principles that were born out of her heart, a desperate heart that just wanted the presence of God. And now she helps other people get in that position. And so I know she's gonna be an answer to your prayers. You'll love her gentle, sweet spirit, but don't let it fool you because she is fierce and a laser and she brings the true word of the Lord. She has gotten to that place in life where she gets to live between two different states. That's my goal. It's coming soon and enjoy just the benefits and beauty of both. So before we go to this very transformational, uh, up close and personal interview with Apostle Nelia Crane, I would like to go to Dr. G. And Dr. G has something he's going to unpack with us today. We either love this topic or we hate it. He's going to talk about caloric restrictions and intermittent fasting. So I know that will help us as we're making nutrition and lifestyle decisions. And so let's go to Dr. G and then we'll be right back with my precious special guest. Hey everybody, this is Dr. G with another one of my biohacks or health hacks for a good life. I'm also called Biohacker USA and I'm the medical doctor at CenteredForLife.com, the holistic Christian healing ministry in St. Simons Island, Georgia. Okay, I know you've probably heard the terms intermittent fasting or caloric restriction, but might not really know what it means or what it does. Are these safe? Should I even consider doing it? Well, as with all medical treatments and alterations in your diet, you should always consult with your own physician before embarking on any of these dietary changes. In some cases, doing either of these may be harmful to you and could actually worsen your personal situation. Everyone is a unique individual, so you must apply this information to your own personal situation in consultation with your doctor. All right, now that being said, caloric restriction. Caloric restriction is where someone actually reduces the number of calories in their diet to a very significant level, often down to 600 or 800 calories a day for an extended period of time. They do this without reducing their vitamins and minerals and mostly eliminate carbohydrates so as to avoid having muscle loss. This is a very difficult thing to do. But the reason that people try to do this is twofold. First, usually it's an attempt to lose weight. It is essentially a form of severe calorie reduction. It can be used for obese persons and it can improve insulin regulation. It essentially puts the body into a survival mode that forces it to clean itself of long-standing debris, dead cells, built up toxins and waste and it can have healing benefits associated with it, such as improved overall longevity, improved clarity of thinking, and feelings of emotional well-being. But unfortunately for most people, it's not sustainable and can lead to severe repercussions and malnutrition or even starvation if it was done wrong. If someone has a chronic condition such as diabetes, a hormonal disorder, a history of an eating disorder, or is pregnant or under the age of 18, they absolutely should not even attempt this. Now, a compromise is intermittent fasting. This is where a person fasts 
for a specific period of time and for a specific number of hours, either daily or on certain days, and limits most of their carbohydrates, but they can eat proteins and a diet richer in fats during a specific time of eating. They can drink water, tea, and coffee. The calorie intake usually is less, but is often the same as regular eating. It has more to do with the timing than the amount of food. The calorie reduction is not as low as in caloric restriction. Usually, they limit their window of eating to specific times and patterns, which vary according to different suggested protocols, depending on their goals. The difference here is that it's intermittent and that it's not constant. Their daily food intake is highly planned and is usually an attempt to either lose weight by burning fat more than carbohydrates. This gets them into a ketotic state, which shows that they're fat burning more than sugar burning as a source of body fuel. Their metabolism is therefore changed. It can still have fantastic weight losses associated with it, Many do it not for weight loss, but for the similar feelings of feeling healthy, since they too trigger a survival response that has associated with it improved mental and emotional well-being. It also rids the body of toxins and built-up waste and can improve longevity. Both methods increase NAD levels, which are known to impact longevity. The same rules apply, though. Those that have underlying conditions like diabetes, pregnancy, hormonal problems, kidney disease, or eating disorders should not try this either. If there are any questions at all, I would advise them to talk to their own personal physician for guidance. Now, I have personally tried intermittent fasting, but I do it intermittently. You know, fasting is talked about in the Bible as a way to cleanse yourself and prepare yourself physically and spiritually in order to be more receptive to God's voice and His Holy Spirit. I hope you learned something new today, and I'll see you next time on Dr. G's Health Hacks. To learn more about NED and intermittent fasting, visit me at www.biohackerusa.com and contact me for your personal consultation or schedule your group's own private presentation. Be sure to get my book, The Biohacker's Guide to the Galaxy, at Amazon.com. And may God bless you all. Now, back to the studio. I love the Lord. He is amazing. And I really love that when he set up the fivefold ministries, he did not specify whether they were male or female. And I'm so blessed to be living in this time in history where so many people are going, hey, I think we might have gotten this wrong. <laughs> and they're embracing women in the forefront, bringing the word, bringing heaven, bringing the heart of God. I am sitting with one such woman and her name is Apostle or prophetess or author or pastor or whatever the Lord has her doing at that moment, Nelia Crane. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Well, I'm, I'm so honored. I was at a service with you a few months ago mm -hmm. and I had been there the previous week and uh, Pastor Cindy had said, you've got to come back for my friend. And the Holy Spirit, something leaped in me. So I knew I was supposed to be back and you oh. came and you just ministered the word. And I just want the viewers to know, you got up and as when you have a message from the Lord, you opened the word and you gave some scriptures and I was taking copious notes. And then all of a sudden you said, that's it. Now I'm gonna bring you into this beautiful vision the Lord gave me and I'm gonna invite you to come in. And I thought, well, surely I'm gonna pick up my notebook again and I'm gonna, and I didn't. And you kept encouraging us to stay in the presence of God, stay where you are. And then you opened up the floor to people to share how they were touched. Mm -hmm. And then of course you minister the prophetic word, which I'm sure you do every time, but it was a, just such a pure, fresh, different, <laughs> glorious style of ministry. 
and I just appreciate your sensitivity. Oh, thank you so much. You know, today, people are aware that they're surrounded by some kind of spirit, yeah. you know, whether it's the Holy Spirit or they're becoming more and more aware that we are spiritual beings yes. and that we have a connection. But seems like um, my role is to help create that atmosphere and then get out of the way. <laughs> You know, and let God let God minister to His people that are gathering together, so they can feel the same presence of God that has been locked off for pastors and preachers and all of that for a while. Right. Now He's um, moving me more into a mandate to create an atmosphere of heaven and then just let Him do the rest so people can know how to get there yeah. when they leave the church service, they will have had that experience as well. Well, you just put words to what I felt and experienced that day. You, you did create a beautiful atmosphere. And then you let Jesus and the Holy Spirit meet everyone in their own way. I can tell you, Jen, it's very um, intimidating in the pastoral role or in the minister's role because you're letting God do the work. Yeah, take control, <laughs> take control of, the service. of the whole thing. Yeah. And in that way, if he doesn't show up, you're dead in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he wants to show up. That's right, right, right. right. But he also so. wants to be invited. Yes, he does. Yes. And you create this God-honoring atmosphere, and you invite Him. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, but it's profound. It is. It is. Um, in writing this book, um, I wasn't prepared to write this. I, I wasn't intending to write a book. All I wanted to do was to hear from God because I was desperate. Yeah. And I had my first... Um, pastoral ship um, given, and I didn't know how to pastor. I, I didn't go to formal training, so I depended exactly on what God said to do in order to do it. Yeah. I was cross-culturing at the moment. I was outside of every comfort zone I had. <laughs> Isn't that what he does? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, God. We trust you. Yes, and, and so it was paramount that I would hear from him. Yeah. And um, so I'd, I'd go away from the house, and this is a clue for everybody. You know, your house talks to you. Yeah. The laundry says, hey, do you remember me? Wash me, wash I, me. I, I, yeah, and, and do you remember that sink full mm -hmm. of dishes? You know, you forgot to do them last <laughs> night. And all the things that a, um, a house talks to you about. And then if the house doesn't talk, the phone does, and it rings, and the people come by. And before you know it, the day's gone. Right. So I was instructed by the Lord to leave the house and go to a designated place, do my studying, and then I would take a blank notebook and write the date at the top of the page and say, you know, if you want to say anything, then I'll just write it down. Just go ahead and talk. And um, that's how it started. And every day I would get a fresh word. Usually it had nothing to do with what I was studying. <laughs> <laughs> and I found out if I filtered it through my own Bible knowledge, he quit talking. Oh, wow. So I, could, I just, my job was just be scribe, write. Yeah. And then later I could ask questions, but not while he was talking. So these sessions that you had with the, the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. typically how long would they be where you're just scribing? Oh. Or a range, approximate. Well, it would t I, I would block out at least two hours okay. in the morning. And the last maybe hour or 45 minutes, I'd sit quiet. Most of the days, it was right away. He would talk to me and I'd write and um, but you know if it took longer fine yeah. it just did but 
once I set myself to be in front of him, the rest of the day rolled out easily. Right. You know, but the days that I skipped it or thought I was too busy, those were a different story. Yeah, those, were, those weren't good <laughs> those days, not right? good days, no. <laughs> okay, so there is an art, Apostle Nelia, to sitting still, turning off our own human brain, like mm -hmm. you said. That, that was very interesting that as soon as you started to try to help him, he stopped talking. He stopped. Mm -hmm. So how did you learn to bring those thoughts captive? to the obedience of Christ, or how did you, how did the Holy Spirit train you to say, hey, 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 that's not me, that's you? How did you learn that, how that, to do that dance? That was the dance, that was the learning process. Um, because when he was talking, of course, it sounds like your own voice, he's in your head. Right. So it was not up to me to filter at that point. When I wrote the date at the top of the page, there was no more filtering. It was just right. Yes. And whatever came into my mind, that's what I wrote. And I would test it out. You know, I had a brand new church. <laughs> <laughs> every Sunday morning, so, right? <laughs> yeah, well, we met every day. Oh, well, praise God. You know, I, I was starving for God. So oh. we had a training center and every night we were there, you know, teaching. for something, for teaching, right. for prophetic training for ministry training and that. And then they wanted, I didn't intend to have a Sunday service. We were just gonna meet five days a week and then that was it. Well, that didn't work. So <laughs> <laughs> they wanted church, so we had church too. But when the classes started and we were in the class, then I would read what I got for the day. And then somebody would jump up and say, that's my word, that's for me. Or I would just observe tears. Tears. You know, people would, just, it would touch them in the deepest place. Wow. And then I knew these were not just my words. Yeah. These were, not, these were holy words. Yes. And we were going through similar things. Yeah. And God was talking to all of us. Yeah. And he just let me write it down. Yeah. <laughs> he so, knew you would obey. And I had no idea this was going to be a book. I mean, I had a fresh notebook and life was in it. You know, I wrote to-do lists for the day. I wrote right. grocery lists in that book. I had sermon notes in that book. Everything, including these words, were in, <laughs> in these notebooks. And um, usually it took about six months to get through a notebook, you know. And then I'd have another notebook, you know. And over 20 years of writing these down, there were many ups and downs and many uh, moves and sizing down and struggles and all of that. But my treasure was mm. in those notebooks. Yeah. And I may have downsized to a whole lot of everything else, but I always kept those notebooks. And there came a point where he said, I want you to go through all of those notebooks and tear the pages out and put together the words I've given you. They had the grocery list and the to-do yeah, list. Tear those out. <laughs> tore, yeah. No, I tore the words out that had the dates at the okay. top of the page. Okay. Okay. And surprisingly, there was enough to make about five volumes. So there are many more. That's why this one is just volume oh, one. Well, that was a question I was going to ask you. <laughs> is this as volume one? That means there's more. Yeah, there are at least five. Yeah. And he hadn't quit writing or talking, so I don't know when the last one will be. Well, and and, and he doesn't want you to know. Mm -mm. Obviously, that's that's his business. Yeah. Well, because we haven't addressed it, this is uh, Nelia Crane's book, and it's called Meet Me at Our Special Place, From God. And I love how she put the signature on there, From God. And uh, as she said, it is volume one. Now, if they want to get this, they go to your Facebook page, they go to Amazon. Um, they can go anywhere online that they sell books. Okay. Um, Amazon, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble. Lifeway. Uh, Lifeway, any any okay. of those places that you can order a book online, my book is there. Even Walmart has it now. Okay, online. that's wonderful. So. <laughs> when you make it to Walmart, that's wonderful, yeah. <laughs> right? You're good. Okay, so, so let me ask you, your 
middle name is Heaven. Tell me yes. about that, because that's so precious. Well, um, that's a story. <laughs> And I'll try to unpack the okay. short version okay. of it. Um, have you ever been to that place where you can pray for everyone else and you can watch that the answer to that prayer walk right up to that person? You can see it being manifested. Yes. You know? But when I prayed for myself, hmm, another story, I would watch my prayer come up the driveway, come up to the front door, and just about ring the doorbell, and then it would turn around and go the other way. <laughs> Somebody else would get the benefit of that prayer. Yeah. And um, I said, God, do I need deliverance? <laughs> or why can I pray for everyone else yeah. and then not have my prayers See answered the victory. for me? Exactly. And um, I, I knew he would answer me at some point. And then I had a, um, an email or something on my um, Gmail page or whatever. And it was an invitation to buy a certain tape. And it was, you can heal your life, you know? And I thought, that's the answer. I need to look at that. Now he'll take all kinds of information, yeah. secular, any other thing. If you, you need to get one sentence out of it. Yeah. He's always speaking. Yes, anywhere. <laughs> Bulletin boards, all the place. You just have to recognize where he's talking to you. And so I got that one and um, I ordered it. A, it. You could buy the book for $20 or you could watch the video for $5. And I, at that time, money was tight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Um, um, so I ordered the $5 one-time view of this video. And um, when I ordered it, it um, didn't play. Hmm. I pay, it took my $5, but it didn't play. Well, that's not Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought, well, that's confirmation. You know, it, it works for everybody else, but oh. it won't work for me. So... Um, I called them the next, it was the weekend, so I called them the next Monday. And there was a back door link that they could unhook or something. And I got to watch it one time. And there was a place in the video that said, you have to learn to love yourself because you create um, an atmosphere. Right. Uh, there was a me inside of me that thought I didn't love me. Mm -hmm. And so that me inside of me was was filtering every good thing coming to me because right. it was answering my expectation yeah. of myself. And so when I changed that, then I said, okay, well, what can I do to convince you that I love you and you can let the answers come to me now. And myself answered and said, well, you can start calling me by my right name. And I thought, where well, that I was, come from? I wasn't expecting that, right. you know? And I said, well, what is your name? And I heard my name is Evan with an H. And I said, your name is Heaven? And I heard, yes, my name is Heaven. And so when I started calling myself by Heaven, oh. all these scriptures started coming oh. too, that you know every good thing is in Heaven. Right. Well, my name is Heaven. Every good thing is in here. And so all of the things that were stopping me from getting um, the revelation, the revelation yeah. and the, the good news and the things all started changing when I started calling myself heaven. Yeah. And um, so that was that I, was the beginning of that. That's so. beautiful. And, you know, it's so biblical. God, all throughout the Bible, renames Changed. his children yes. and changes names. And right. it's to give always to give them an, an extra layer a revelation of who he is, who you are, mm -hmm. and you received that new name. I did. In fact, on Facebook, you're a group where people can gather mm -hmm. and 
get your teachings and all of the chapters broken down of Meet Me at Our Special Place is called Heaven's, Heaven's Place. Heaven's Place on mm -hmm. Facebook. So Heaven's I encourage Place. anyone to go on Heaven's Place on Facebook. Now, this is the part I don't like because it means we've, we're coming to the end, but uh, Apostle Nelia, I think that God is something for you to minister to those that are watching, that are leaning in, and they want the presence of God. They're desperate like you were. They want to hear Him, and I just want to release you to minister to them. Okay. Okay. Well, first of all, there are no mistakes, and God loves you with an ever, everlasting love, and He wants to talk to you in that secret place where it's just you and Him. So I just... Uh, I pray right now that you'll be able to quiet yourself and hear the voice of God to yes. you to when He draws you in to meet me at that secret place. Then you'll know that it's His drawing for you to come in. Um, so all that uh, God, let me pray for you. Father, we just thank you right now for your timing and your purpose and everything that you have for each person to meet with you in that secret place where you can reveal purpose and plan and destiny and secret things in that secret place. Yes. So I thank you, Father God, for um, the invitation that's extended now. And you can just accept that invitation. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I, I, I will say I, I encourage everyone to get a copy of this. It's really important as we're beginning a new time, a new year, a new season. Uh, one of my favorites uh, is your chapter on no more pity parties because yeah. I think sometimes we struggle with pity parties. Mm -hmm. I also love um, the devotion on uh, what takes your breath away. Yes. Uh, there's so much insight. And you know, another thing I appreciate about the writing is at the end of each one, you signed love dad. And mm -hmm. for those that haven't had a father and that, or, or that have struggled with an orphan spirit or rejection, this is just like, um, this is just like heavenly love and a love letter from your father. So get a copy of this, connect with Apostle Nelia, learn more about her ministry, receive from her and learn how to sit still in God's presence. It's there that he can return your heart back home into his presence, into his love, into every promise. And thank you for doing this. We look forward to the other volumes. You'll have to come back. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for being with us today. My name is Jen Nallen. I appreciate you. God loves you and come home.